you like the music in the intro, be sure to check out Sarah Jane Music on YouTube for her cover of Everything Zen by Bush. Merchandise is now available at store.bowlinglabs.com. The Panda Pack patches benefit Positive Tales Dog Rescue in Kansas City, and the long-awaited Heckin' Urethane hoodie and jacket are up and available. Thanks for your support and enjoy the video. Hello and thanks for joining me for a detailed look at the 900 Global Zen. In the few short months since its release, the Zen has taken the bowling world by storm, pun absolutely intended, like few other balls I've ever seen. We're going to find out exactly what makes it so popular and if it's indeed one of those special balls that has staying power like a Phase 2, IQ Tour, or a High Road. Everyone I've heard from loves it. It was one of the first global balls the Storm and Roto staffers drilled in January when the brands merged. The pros adopted it quickly. It's seen a lot of airtime so far. It looks and sounds sexy. It hooks a lot for a shiny ball, but it's also really controllable and versatile. It just seems to be one of those balls that's always in play and always does everything right, so I had to drill one. I just couldn't avoid it any longer. I chose a 4.5 pin to pap and a 2 inch pin buffer for the Zen. PSA to pap doesn't matter on a symmetric ball of course, but I really wanted it to be all purpose. I laid this ball out with the new Storm Arc Ruler. The blend of simplicity and precision makes this a really handy tool. I like big core symmetrics to begin with, but some of my 5 inch stuff can be a little too long and quick sometimes, and the 4 inch ones are just too much too early, so I split the difference. If this is all great to you, in the description I've linked the Storm Pin Buffer Layout System Trilogy. Alex Hoskins did an amazing job with those and it's all you've ever wanted or needed to know about layouts. The symmetric mediate core that we see here in this incredibly cool half ball is the largest core that Global has ever put into a ball. The language on the website says that increases hitting power and gives the ball a more consistent reaction. Hit, I think, is more a product of being lined up and matched up well, but bigger and stronger cores do create more consistency. That's why people like bigger cores, stronger symmetrics like the phases, axioms, idols, etc. You get the strength without the extra torque that ASIMs have. Numbers are a 249RG and an 051 differential in 15 pounds, which is very close to idle and phase numbers. I'm going to leave the Zen shiny. I actually like factory shine. For some people it can make the reaction inconsistent, but that's where I'm going to start. A big point to add here too as we start taking a look at ball reaction is that I don't think many people are knocking the shine off or having to knock it off. The cover feels really strong and even with the shine on it it's still digging or getting traction earlier and it blends the lane front to back better than nearly any ball I've ever thrown. The S77 response cover is still pretty quick. If I get it outside too far too quick it's going to respond but I do have a pretty good amount of miss room inside. The strength of both the cover and core pretty well maxes out its consistency and forgiveness. Usually on a shiny ball you have to break that shine if you want it to be more consistent or forgiving, but the shine balances the strength of the cover and puts the ball reaction in all the right places on the vast majority of typical conditions. I don't know where global covers land on the Storm and Roto cover spectrum. The number in the cover name indicates its overall strength, but there's a big difference between, for example, R3S Hybrid Strong on the Phase 3 and Traction X7 Hybrid Strong on the Parallax. There are distinguishable differences between their stronger covers like R3S, R4S, NRG, NEX, Spec, so just having a number associated with the cover strength doesn't really tell me anything on paper. It feels a lot like the Traction X7 Pearl cover on the Parallax Effect and NEX Pearl on the Axiom Pearl. The best way that I can describe it is that it's near Axiom Pearl strength and friction response, but with the overall shape of the trend. The piston core in the trend is pretty naturally continuous. It creates more of an arcing shape on the lane. The Axiom Pearl wants to be a little straighter and is better suited for more precise directional control off the end of the pattern, but NEX Pearl is really strong. It blends the lane crazy good front to back and still manages to be responsive enough. The Zen is what I'd imagine NEX Pearl on the piston core would look like, but even a bit stronger than that, which is what makes me think Traction X7. But the strength of that giant core might be the bit extra that I'm reading. Either way, that's the zone it's in. It's definitely an Axiom Pearl territory, and for those of you overseas equipment fans or experts, the stronger covers on the Marvel series, like a, like a Marvel Max SE, are somewhat familiar here too. NRG Pearl creates a little more chug, I think, than the Zen has, and Angel actually has a Trend SE, which is any X Pearl on the piston core, so we might have to take a look there. 
Now, while I've been rambling, the Zen has been striking at will. This is quite possibly the most comfortable I've felt throwing a ball on the left side of the lane so far. It's so naturally continuous that I don't have to worry too much about coming up the back of it. It'll still pick up and drive. It's easy enough up front that I don't have to worry about shoving it or pushing it to get it down the lane. It's also forgiving enough that I've got a good amount of room. Now, I think playing to miss inside, on, especially on a house shot, is generally the smarter play. With as strong and blendy as it is, it's kind of deceptively strong strong. Several of these shots I thought, oops, I got a little firmer fast with that when it still pulled up and got through the pins well. Even if it was a little late and had to kick a seven or mix them up, it still did it. Those are the small things that separates it from other balls. Other balls have limits at some point. Some just refuse to get down the lane from straighter and some kind of hit a wall as you get deeper. The Zen wasn't necessarily comfortable from super straight. It's still pretty strong, but it worked. As I continued to chase it deeper and deeper, it just kept coming. I made the necessary adjustments, of course. I got a little slower. I got around a little bit more up the rev rate, but that's not enough for some balls. Some just aren't really built for angle, and you have to go too far out of your way to manufacture ball reaction rather than just making the adjustments and executing a still good and comfortable shot. If I had the ability to womp on it a little bit more, I could have done some serious heck, but the last shot of the video isn't one you're going to want to miss. For me, the Zen lives up to the hype and I can see why it's been on back order and backing up plant production and other new releases for months now. Usually I'm one of the first, if not the first, to get reviews out for new balls and in that situation I can understand that some might be hesitant or skeptical and want to see real world application, uh, how many are actually on the return at league, throw them at a demo, see what they look like in other people's hands before buying in or believing what a staffer has to say or what's in a promotional video. The best part is that I don't have to feel like I'm going to get called out for being a staffer hype guy trying to drive pre-sales. This thing's been everywhere in the six months since it came out. It's become one of those balls that's an automatic in the bag to go everywhere for the staffers. It's all over league racks across the country. It's on TV all the time. And I think it's still going to be around five years from now. It's a phase two high road venom shock black widow line type of ball. And that still doesn't mean that literally everyone's going to match up with it. But I think it's going to be more of a fluke if you don't. Finally, for my ratings, I give the Zen an 8 for hook potential, a 6 for length, and a 7 for back end strength. It's closest to the parallax effect on hook potential, the axiom pearl on length, and the trend on back end strength. Select the next comparison you'd like to see from the links on the screen or scroll down to the description to find links to other choices. Thanks for watching and may the strikes be with you.